So I'm doing new patient exams today, and my first patient for the day uh, is Grace, and Grace is coming on referral from a dentist because of um, crowding, right? Now, if you look at Grace's teeth, back right together, Grace, you can see she's got no room for her canines, right? But if you look closer, open up really big, you see how narrow her palate is. When I see a kid who has a narrow palate, we always suspect either a habit, um, uh, like thumb sucking, or many times airway obstruction. Now, if you look at Grace's tonsils, can you say ah, big ah, okay? You can see they're blocking her airway, right? So look at those tonsils, they're a grade three tonsil. Uh, the other thing is we look at the uh, method of uh, breathing and she tends to be obviously uh, a mouth breather. Um, so bite together again. So the classic is we have a narrow palate with a cross bite. Um, we have an associated anterior tongue thrust open again because the tongue can't really sit there so if you look at the side of the tongue just poke your tongue forward a bit you can see the scalloping of the teeth on there so scalloping on the side of the tongue narrow palate large tonsils all that's a, a clue as to what we would need to do bite together again in the old way of doing orthodontics we would just extract some teeth um, open again normally these ones these premolar teeth and that would get the eye teeth down very quickly but the problem is the palate still remains narrow so the tongue still hasn't got room lots of research now are linking expansion of the palate to improve the nasal breathing so for this young lady we'd work with an enos and throat doctor regarding the large tonsils um, and we would then expand the upper jaw uh, to make room for the teeth once the expander comes out, we then train Grace how to change her tongue posture from forward to upward. Now, let's have a look at uh, something else here. I'll take my gloves off. This is Grace's uh, lateral ceph x-ray. And you can see uh, the large adenoids, right? Another name for adenoids is the nasopharyngeal tonsil. So air going through the nose is being blocked in a number of occasions here. You can see the nasal polyp uh, quite cleasily there. You can see the large uh, adenoids, and in the mouth, I just showed you the large tonsils. So all of that paints a picture to her breathing habit. Now look at the angle of the teeth. You can see the tongue get in there. That is what's called a tongue thrust, and that's what's causing those teeth to um, procline like that. We have um, a brochure which we uh, give to parents. I'm happy to send anyone who wants a copy of this. Uh, this brochure explains to parents the link between the narrow palate and the mouth breathing and explains all the common sites of obstruction which I've just gone through and how we want to get the jaw from that size to that size. We also have included a range of references that talk about the narrow palate and the compromised nasal um, air ones. It's called a hyrax. We put bands on the back teeth, you turn a key and it widens the palate. But we do it slowly and by doing it slowly I find I get better remodeling of the palatal vault. So uh, the palatal vault is the floor um, off the nose, quick anatomy lesson, here's the arch form we need. Why is it like that? Because the tongue sits up there. If the tongue's not there, for whatever reason, then the buccinator muscles take over and squeeze everything together. Uh, so look at the anatomy, the nasal floor, the palatal vault, two are very much related. So if I can widen here, my enos and throat doctor can clear the plumbing there, we're going to get a much nicer result. But the earlier you do it, the more that face is going to grow forward. The longer you leave it, the more you're going to end up with a mid-face deficiency. Right?